Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So glad you made it to worship this morning. And so as we get ready to worship, we're going to uh, hear a scripture in paraphrase. It's just, it's a long scripture. I've shortened it up to just two basic parts. It's found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. You'll recognize it as the house on the rock story. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a rock. The passage then continues, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. Let us stand as we worship this morning together. Understanding that uh, we turn to you in everything that we have, all of our desires, all of our wants, all of the needs that we have, the, the things that we come before you with, we lead off in worshiping you, God. You are a holy God, and so in your presence, we ask that we have a pure heart before you. As we come before you in this time frame, God, we ask that you accept all of our praise unto you. Thank you for listening to the many things that we have on our list. God, you already know, but we ask that you'll be with us in this time frame as we come together as a whole person before you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.
You may be seated. Yeah. 
come before you as we continue before you in your presence. We come with a humble heart with our prayer requests made known to you, God. So grateful that you know them all. So grateful that you are working on them all. Help us to have the patience to be aware of what's taking place within the, the requests, especially that we have personally. God, help us to have that patience to really truly rely on you for an answer that you have. Whatever that be, God, then help us be the ones that is praising you for what you do and telling others how you are so active within our lives and the requests that we have, even, even outside of our own personal thing as we pray for the church. God, we ask that there will be an anointing upon not only the ministries that take place, but we're so grateful for those that can give in a time of offering, in a time of, of giving, to where um, we ask a, a blessing upon them, God. And I know that there's times where, where life gets really hard and, and finances get really so tight and sometimes not even available. But God, we ask a, a blessing upon each and every person that has a heart for you, God, that can and cannot give. We ask God that you'll help us as the church expand upon our ministries, that glorify you, God. As new things are taking place within the church, God, we ask that you'll anoint over it, that it'll help others draw closer to you, especially. God, there's hands that have been raised throughout this service this morning with special needs. As we go throughout our week, help us to be reminded to pray for one another, to lift up their request to you, God, and just in an agreement, knowing that you need to be at, that, that you are at work with it, God. We also are so grateful for those that are um, in the, the group downstairs that are meeting, God. We ask that an anointing upon their hearts as they learn to uh, draw close to you, to follow you, and to, to just uh, be blessed by you. God, thank you for the things that take place throughout the rest of our day and week ahead of us. We ask especially an anointing upon this service. In Jesus' name, amen. going to try awesome God with the verses as we uh, go at it today. Did I not put your stuff on there?
just kind of hit your head like, hey, I know exactly where I put them. <laughs> oh, that was me. Which is good because as I walked in there, I just seen a whole bunch of papers. All right. Who needs who? Huh. As I was uh, working at EMC, I was sitting there thinking about the upcoming message, the upcoming service that we have for this today, today is for this service. And I began to think about, well, last week it started with prayer. Prayer was such an important ministry in the church. Remember, I had the, had the, uh, the thought process of it was everyone can pray and we have prayer time. We have prayer meetings, but we, we, we really need as the church is about to uh, go on the endeavor of growing, growing spiritually, growing in numbers, growing in ministries. As you walk in downstairs, you see the thought process or vision or whatever you want to call it. It is what is going to take place within the church. We started off with prayer last week. And so as I was working through this, this process of what to do, especially it's been a year since I thought uh, came to a point of printing all this stuff and working through it. Remember the story of Joshua and um, moving forward that Joshua did? So the next thing was besides prayer, which is so important with the church, would be groups. I believe groups, and there's a lot of groups that are listed on the board downstairs, from youth groups to junior youth groups to kid zone to uh, uh, women's group, men's group, uh, Wednesday Bible study or any Bible study. There's a whole bunch of groups on the on the uh, board down there. Also put in there the group that's going to be praying also. Okay, they go into that group area. And so groups are so important for the church. Growing up in the church, uh, especially in the, I'll say in the 70s, uh, 80s, maybe in the 80s it started to come about. In the 70s, I had never heard of a cell group or a small group, or I've heard it called a growth group, or there's all kinds of names that churches give these groups that they have. Growing up in the 70s, we had this. We had Sunday morning service, we had Sunday night service, and we had Wednesday night Bible study. Or the, if you go even a little bit further, it was actually called Wednesday night prayer meeting, is what it was called. And so, we and we would have time of prayer, we would have, uh, <clears throat> just some learning and stuff like that. But those were the names that were given. And then I'm gonna say in the 80s in Barrington, Illinois, because uh, we were in Rockford, Barrington, Illinois is just a slight suburb outside of Chicago, outside of Chicago where I don't even remember the guy's name, I don't remember the name of the church, but it was one of the largest churches in Northern Illinois. And they came up with this, this group thing so that as they grew as a church, 
they had these groups that got together that were smaller in groups so that they could do some things stronger and better following God. And so that's when, um, and I think back then it was called the cell group or whatever, but the title of the name of the group really isn't as important as what these groups do within the health of not only the church, but the health of the believer. I say it those two ways, because if the believer is walking a life that is in despair, if a believer is walking a life that is frustrating, if a believer is walking a life sometimes feeling unfulfilled, or, or the believer is walking at a time sometimes where they don't think their prayers are being quite answered. It, believers have these, these issues just like everyone else. And so as you come into a group, you have more of an opportunity to express or be seen as a person like, like, like this. How many have some, um, well, it's a difficult question. You either have friends or you don't have friends. If you have friends, there's probably multiple facets of your friends. There are friends that are like, you know what, I will call them a friend, but really in reality, they're more of an acquaintance that shows up all the time. Meaning there's nothing really deep about it. Then you also have these friends that are like, hey, you know, I'm a part of your group because I like the group. And so you got your friends that are a part of that group. Then there's some other friends that are a little bit closer. They'll sit with you, they'll laugh with you, they'll have conversation with you. And so they're ready and they'll even sit in the same pew as you. <laughs> and so, but come Sunday after service, and they kind of kind of go their separate ways. Uh, one of the difficulties in LA is that you have people, especially that were in our church, that travel multiple miles just to get to church. Traffic that came worse and worse made it harder and harder. Okay, but there was a time where even then we would just kind of disperse our own little cities, our own little ways. You know, still friends. Then there's these other friends that are in your, in your town, they hang out. You hang out with them, not only in church, but you kind of go to the coffee house, or you go to the restaurant, or you go to, at one time, we had people that were going to the senior center together. They, they knew when this, see, I don't know how it is now. I knew before COVID, the senior center was active, and there's people talking about what it was doing and stuff like that, and hanging out at it. Now, I don't know how they are now, but uh, it's about time we stop blaming COVID for all of our difficulties and say, let's move forward and let's start coming together and interacting together again. Be it at what other, whatever age group we are in. Those are the close friends. The ones who would love to uh, hang out. Uh, and let's talk church for a moment. Even greater than just the service. Let's have, ready? Let's have where we have a family game night. You know, ain't no preaching, ain't no doing this and that. We're just going to come together, we're going to have popcorn, we're going to have snacks, and we're just going to play some games. Ready? And some games maybe I can beat you at, because that's what's fun about games, right? Win winners? Winners are always fun at games. And so you hang out with your friends to do these things. Those are kind of the close friends. Then there's the other friends that you have they can really see your heart. They know, especially when you're down. They know why you're down. They ask, is there anything I can do for you? And really, really mean it. You know what I'm talking about? Those kind of close friends that you can even call. Maybe there's family members that are like that. They're, they're really close. They'll help you out no matter what. But whatever, you got those close ones. Or at least I hope you have those close ones. And those are the kind of, when you think in your head, those are the groups that are starting to come together that really, really matter. The ones where you can sit with someone and, 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 and tell them uh, some of your deepest difficulties, and they're there for you. And so uh, in churches, that was one of the three things about the group. It was a building block of relationships that helped people grow, grow spiritually, grow physically and, and just grow as a a band of believers more than just church and that's how it, I believe uh, started off now I'm going to get a little scriptural there 
because it's like this. The greatest example was Christ. He was the great. Because you know what? You will notice Christ did not go to church to get into a group to get his disciples. Now, I said, you know, or temple, because Jesus always went to the temple. Okay? If you wanted to really get scriptural, Jesus would go to the temple. Jesus didn't go up to the temple, sit down in the back row, and 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 because that you can see everybody. You know what I'm talking about? And so he didn't start going, okay, there's one right there, number two's gonna be there, number three. Yeah, those three are gonna be in trouble, but I better keep them close. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, that twelfth one. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's going to play a major role. We'll work this out. He didn't do that. If you read the story of Jesus, what he did is he went outside and he went, the first one that you can read where he, uh, well, there's different scriptures. You can see where he went to uh, the seashore, right? And he found two right away. <laughs> and, and what happened? When he talked to them, not in church, he talked to them, he said, hey, I want you guys to follow me. What did they do? They left their dad in the boat. Mm -hmm. Worse than that, they were mending their nets, meaning they were preparing the nets to hold a big old boatload, literally, of fish. That was their job. That was their livelihood. That's how they made money to survive. And they were walking in their dad's footsteps. And Jesus said, come and follow me. And they dropped their nets, got out of the boat, walked on the shore with Jesus. Two right there. Then there was Andrew, who went and found his, uh, who went and found his brother. And his brother was Peter, right? No, 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 no. I think it was. Who? I can't remember. Uh, I got them all in my head right here, right? But Andrew, Andrew was one of my favorites because Jesus uh, was talking with Andrew, and Andrew immediately left Jesus to get. Uh, I think it was came uh, Philip. And he goes in and he tells him, hey, you've got to see this guy I just met. Comes and joins the group. Mm -hmm. Then you have Peter and you have uh, uh, Matthew. Matthew's another fun one. <laughs> right? He was a government official. <laughs> and Jesus walks up to his government official table. And here's the thing, talk about friends. I don't believe Matthew had a lot of friends, okay? Matthew's friends would be these, other thieves, <laughs> other, or government officials, however you want to call them. <laughs> and I say that because what they did is the government said, hey, they owe us this much in taxes. Whatever you collect after that, that's your own business. And so what they, they went like this, ching. They didn't put a cap on it. They didn't say how much I had to make an hour. They said, whatever you want to charge the people in your area, you charge them. As long as we get our bid. And so those people were despised because nobody likes the government coming into your pockets and taking all of your money. Nobody does. Just a, a, a quick little note, because I've always, you always hear stuff like this. You know what? We should be more like this country off here over there and especially in the in the Norwegian lands and in and, and English lands and all those lands where it's all cold and damp we need to be more like them you know why because they got free health care there's nothing in life free I'm gonna tell you that right now because what happens the government comes in and sticks their hand in their pockets you know how much they pay in taxes 50% 50 per, so you make a dollar, guess what? You only got 50 cents. It's easy math. Because the government comes in and takes their money that way. Not only does the government take their money in those taxes, it comes in and says, guess how much you're gonna pay in gas? $9 a gallon. See, we're freaking out when it gets close to five. Can you imagine paying $9 a gallon? Now, if some of you go, I don't drive, guess what? Guess how high your gas is to heat your home. Guess how high, how high your, your electricity is to heat your home? Because it takes fuel to make electricity. And so guess how much your electric, electric bill is going to be? Understand, see, that's why I say there's nothing free. They're going to take all of your money, just like, ready? Because you know where they learned it? 
by reading the scriptures. You know, the tax collectors, they get to take whatever they want, except for Matthew. Jesus came up to Matthew at his little tax booth. And he said, hey, I want you to come follow me. And what did Matthew do? I, I picture it this way. Let's pretend my Bible here is the books. And he's writing because he's keeping track. Yep, the Romans, they get this many denarii. In fact, it probably wasn't denarii. That's the little one. They probably got whatever the, the big one was. They get all this gold, and I get an equal share <laughs> and take as much money. And that way, I get my share. And so Jesus comes up and says, Matthew, it's just a minute. I'm adding this up. Matthew, I want you to come and follow me. He makes eye contact with the Savior and goes like this and leaves his stuff right there to follow Jesus. To be what? A part of this one group. And the beauty of the group that Jesus taught us that is so important, that makes you grow closer to God, that's the group Jesus had in the 12. Think of who all was in it. There was a doctor. There was a, 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 an accountant. There was someone that was counting the money that shouldn't have been counting the money. <laughs> In fact, he had, he had his heart was troubled the whole time. That was Judas. Mm -hmm. Then there was others. There was doubters that were in the group. There were those who were so arrogant that thought they should be number one and number two yeah. in the group. Yeah. And I look at that group and I go, you know what? It's like Jesus handpicked the world and said, if they'll just make a group kind of like this, Watch what God will do. Amen. That's right. Yeah. And so that's why that's why it is so important that churches go, you know what? Sunday morning's great. And if they have a Sunday night, Sunday night is great. If they have a youth group, that's great. If they have a Wednesday Bible study, that's great. But God wants us to draw closer and closer within our groups that it's not just on a specific day designed by the church. You should have a group where uh, they are, they're, as, as uh, the back row is, rooting for the Dodgers, win the World Series. And, and so I, I, I'm keeping, I, I, I kind of want the Yankees to win, I'm sorry. But because I told, I told Daniel years ago, if the, if the Dodgers aren't playing the Cubs, I will root for the Dodgers. <laughs> and so what I'm saying is there's an opportunity for people in groups to just hang out and live life together. Why do I say that? Because that was the 12. They lived life together for three, three and a half years with the Savior. 13 guys walking a dusty road hitting this little town here, hitting this little town here, being hated in this town here. But they stayed together. Can you imagine going to a town that would like to tar and feather you or shove you off a cliff? Because they tried to shove Jesus off a cliff. In fact, uh, I love it because in, in that story, Jesus is near the edge of the cliff. They're coming to, and ready? Bear with me. All I can think of is, is SpongeBob when they're trying to shove the, their little town Bikini bottom over a cliff. What was it? Shove! Or they were saying something. Push, push, push. And that's this crowd coming up to Jesus. Push, push. And the, the thing that just amazes me is Jesus walked through the crowd as if they weren't even there. So a town that hates you so much, Jesus had 12 other guys by his side. 12 other guys that he could rely on. Twelve other guys that at one point in those three years turned into 72 strong believers that he sent them out to do miracles. And, and so there's things that happen in that little small group of people together. You know, once you get really big, there's things you cannot do as a large group. You, you hear of these mega churches, right? And I'm not saying anything against them. But if you have 15,000 in your stadium, it's not like you know and are close to all of them, right? I mean, you could say, I go to that church. That's awesome. But you could say, you know, here's what our growth group does or our small group does. We make sure we meet together on Sunday in the pew. So we take up a whole pew, 12 of us. 13 of us, maybe 20 of us. 
I wouldn't go higher than 20 because then all of a sudden you're just you're huge and it's hard to really make some really good contact 12 15 man that's good because then you know everyone you're laughing with everyone you learn someone's name you didn't no, you understand this. Let's say there's 80 people that are sitting in church here this morning. And so out of the 80, it'd be hard. It's hard to do, I know. It's hard to memorize every name of people that are outside of your clique, but they go to your church. At one time, um, I could, as a, um, I was at a, at a youth camp, and I was, for a while, I was a counselor with the kids and so you had to learn the names of the kids in your cabin if you were in a small cabin it was only 12 if you were in a big cabin there was I think 25 of us or 20 of us in the cabin and so you had to learn every kid's name why is that because it was important to call up someone by their name or their nickname that's how see a nickname means you're really close you have the honor of calling them by their nickname and so um, but there was a time where we gathered together with the counselors and there was like 35 of us because it was a huge camp and we would go around the room introducing each other and we challenged it can you name can you then name the names of the people so i sat at the very end as it went around and then i named every name it, i'm older now <laughs> wiser but more forgetful <laughs> But there's this closeness that takes place in a small group where you can name names and draw closer to them. There is the deep relationship that takes place with it. There is a time, and I'm just gonna rattle off a few things and then I'm just gonna say a couple scriptures, okay? But there's this importance of the group, of a small group together. There's a time where you take in a small group and you have to grow uh, spiritually. The only way you're gonna grow spiritually in a, in a group, besides listening to a pastor on a Sunday morning, the best way is getting into a smaller group where you can open up the scriptures, have conversation about them, and the most important thing, ask questions when it really doesn't make sense. Because that is the only way you learn stuff. In fact, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna say it out loud right now, but there's, I got pro, pro, uh, proposed a question. And I'm like, wow, I know the story. I know the individual. I know it's in the scripture. It's a challenge to find this deeper part of the story. But because someone asked a question, it makes you question. And that's how you grow spiritually. Because now you're deeper in the word. You're really learning more and more about uh, like when we learned about Joshua and some of the things that took place in that you grow with that and I say spiritually because you learn more about God and then you're able to share that spiritual level of learning to someone else so important what it does then is it leads to what we call discipleship that's a big word a lot of times there's big words but when you come to a point and it's easy to think of it this way when I invite a friend to church and they join that little group that we have, that we have besides church, and we start asking questions and he's asking questions or she's asking questions to the person I invited, and then all of a sudden, because they're, see, one person doesn't have to, quote, be the discipler, okay? And so you can have a group where like, we're all gonna learn together, and now there's, there's a, not to gain up on someone, but to draw close in a, a relationship where you know what, ask a question, we'll talk about it. And then that person, male or female, whatever, they will uh, have an opportunity to know Jesus as savior. They love God, they love Jesus, they wanna follow what he teaches, just like you, that's discipleship. But get rid of the big word and say, you know what, I'm inviting someone to come to know God, closer. That's the part of the group. That's what's important about the group. Then there's other things that you can do in a group, okay? Some of the groups that are listed down there um, in such a way, they need leaders. Not all of us are leaders, but they need leaders. So there needs to be in the church, there needs to be this, this bringing up of leaders, okay? Those who are tight with God in such a way that can actually go beyond that little group of leaders and be somewhere else. 
it's important that you have leaders that can do all of that kind of care and equipping of other people. I will say this, there's a couple of things about the group that's like this. A group helps us with a feeling of belonging. How, nobody, you know what? Nobody wants to survive, you can't survive alone. You alone will bring you into a, a, a realm of darkness and depression. You can sit there, oh, I'm so strong, I can be by myself forever. I'm that, I'm that strong. You know what? Let's go back to the example Christ set. He got 12 guys together with him. Christ, because <laughs> better than me, better than anyone else who thinks they can do it on their own. Ready? <laughs> Jesus set the example. If anyone could do it on their own, it would have been him. That's right. That's true. <laughs> He did not need 12, 12 of all of these that I had named. He didn't need 12. He asked for 12. He wanted to show the world that 12, the coming together, is way better than alone. Why is that? Because that one part I told you, Christ told his 12 to go out without him. That's what a leader does. That's what the group does. And if what it does, it brings us to a place of belonging. Even Judas felt he belonged in the group. Judas, the way his heart was, we can do all kinds of things, but there's one point in time, we do know this, where Judas, Judas said, hey, why did you break that expensive perfume and pour it on Jesus when we could have taken it and sold it and helped the poor? That's in the scriptures. That was G, uh, Judas's thought process, even though he wanted to skim some money from the sale, but Judas felt by being a watchdog of the finances, he was a part of the group. Judas, Judas, I, I guarantee Jesus made Judas feel very, very special. Because that's how the Savior is. A time to belong. It also does this for us. It keeps us accountable. Accountable is another big word. Let me help you out. What it does is it helps us to stay on the right track. A, a little group helps us to stay on the right track. They, remember what I said? They see when you're having a difficulty, and a difficulty could lead you down a wrong path. So your friends in your group come with you, beside you. They pray for you. They're there for you for anything. And when you look like you have fallen down and are in sin, Rather than go, whoa, forget that person. They're a sinner again. I don't want them around in our group. No, their group gathers around, lifts the, in the book of James, it's great. James, the brother of Jesus, expounds upon the need of accountability and how when you stay together with a group, that group is right there for you to bring you back on the right path. Accountability. That's the thing about groups. Now let's talk just a little bit more. In a group, in the book of Corinthians, it talks about talents, talks about each part of the body. In fact, uh, Paul, uh, Peter writes it in such a way that, that you have this understanding, you know what? Take a look at your body, okay? The eye can't do what the ear can do. The ear can't do what the mouth can do, even though that's in a close relationship. It still can't do what the mouth does. The same thing as your fingers can't do what your legs do. You understand, each part is so important that way God puts you together. And when he puts you together like that, it is for his own divine purpose. It is for following him. It's for loving him. It's for being a part of him. Because a part of that body thing that we have is the Holy Spirit in us. Because Christ says, here's what's going to happen. You follow me. You do you obey my commands. You follow my instruction. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit as a free gift for all time. That's right. Not just Sunday. Not just when you're in your little group. But for all time. Every day. Every day. When you wake up and when you go down, when you're at the ball game, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm not saying this is how you do it. I'm saying, you know what? When your heart is at a certain pace or you're watching it on TV because we're all poor. I can't go. <laughs> but, 
as you're watching it, you, your heart goes, you know what? Man, I hope, I hope, and some of them are dire. I hope my team wins. Like they got a financial investment in it. But no matter what, what you have is where God sees your, your joy. God sees your pain. And in all of it, including watching a ball game with your buddy, Christ has placed the Holy Spirit there to just expound upon that joy. I hope you're not taking it wrong. It's not praying for my ball team to win. And woo, they won the World Series only because I was praying. No, it's not about that. It's just about God in your life with your crew. Okay? Each piece comes together in a special way. Because you know what? There are people that can... Um, in their group, their group, you know, in some of the larger churches, there is a group that is actually designed to do what's out there to help someone with their vehicle. That's what they do, you know? And I'm not saying it's a guy thing or anything like that because they're girl mechanics. What I'm saying, there's a heart of a mechanic that they come together and they help others with their vehicles. That, you know, for some things, that would be really cool in church, wouldn't it? Or how about this? They help with uh, uh, cleaning your house. Ready? There's a group, ready? When someone passes away or some tragedy or, or, or a health need happens in your life, there's a group in church that says, you know what? They got a family of four or a family of three, and the person that got sick is the one that usually cooks. Let's make sure we bring a meal to their house every day for a week there's a group that's their heart they come together they do all their little recipe things and whatever and they go boom we're going to make this happen where they do not have to worry about how they're going to eat that week because the church group this little church group is going to do it not the church this little group in the church is going to do it each piece is so needed in the church that when you start looking at the different pieces and how they function, you go, wow, the church as a whole with all its little pieces are working really for God to be seen out there in the community. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says this, and let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. That's what a little group does. How do we help? How do we make people inspired to have love upon someone and to do the actual function needed to love upon them? See, I, I had to go deeper with it. It's not, hey, I love you, or say, hey, I'm praying for you. It's, hey, not only am I praying for you, but ready? Let's go down. We're going to bring you some dinner every day for a week. The deeds. How do we inspire people to be that part of a group? One of the things, just to add scripture to the group that is together for encouragement, to help them, to strengthen them, especially in their faith, is right here in Romans 1, verse 12. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Why do you go to your small group? When it, when, if you have a small group, why do you go to your small group? To be encouraged by your faith. To have my faith encourage you. Remember, like I said, you're going to have a bad day. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to have a bad day. I do not have every good day. There, there are bad days that come my way, and someone else has to come and encourage me. And, right, sometimes it's not just Connie. Because there's other pieces to the puzzle of encouragement. We need to encourage one another. Coming in together in a group. In Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verses tw uh, verse 20. If two of you agree down here on earth 
concerning anything you ask of my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because they are mine, I am there among them. Christ is talking, and as he's teaching this, it's like this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you as a group, gather together. I want you to be together. And even as small as two or three, I want you to come together. And when you do, I, this part of the scripture, it talked about talking to God and asking for things as this little group, even as two or three, you're asking God. You notice it wasn't that one scripture that said, whatever you ask for, I will give you. It didn't say that. This area of scripture says this, that is so important. Where the two or three of you gather, or your group of 12 gather, and you come together asking God, guess who's with you? The Savior. The Holy Spirit. So where, who, how, however many, I am there with you. I'm among you. I love that, for that, that translation. I am among you, right there with you. This is why it's so important to pray. This is why it's so important to be a part of the cog in the wheel, to be a part of the group, to be a part of that little small group. However you're going to do it, this is why it is so important. It's important to be one that does uh, the music. It's important to be one that does the teaching and the goofing off with the kids or the goofing off with the adults. Or It's important. Each little part is important. And there's when you look downstairs, there's always one spot for you. Yeah, just look at it and go, you know what? I know he said, everyone can do this. I'm going to do this one. Or I like social events. I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to see what I can do to be a part of this one. Wherever your heart is, be a part of that group. Draw together, draw close together. When you do gather together more often than just once or a month or twice or three or whatever, once, if you start developing this group that hangs out together, it's kind of like those. Um, somebody shout out a game they like to play. What games do you like to play? Clue. Clue what? Clue. Clue. <laughs> All right. Clue. Domino. Dominoes. Okay. It's a little easier than clue for me because all I got to do is count dots. <laughs> Monopoly. Monopoly. Oh, yeah. The money man over here. <laughs> the, 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 the estate man <laughs> wants to gather all of your properties. Remember I told you at the very beginning, I'm going to tease you a little. Remember I told you about the tax collector? Give me all your properties <laughs> and your railroads. <laughs> we do we <laughs> love to play Monopoly. And, and so that's why I can tease you. Checkers. 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 So, yes. See, now we're not even just counting dots, black and red. <laughs> Chinese checkers. Oh, Chinese checkers. Yeah. See, my fat fingers don't like that little ball. <laughs> yeah. When you do it, though, thank you for shouting those out. Because here's the thing. With the ones that you guys shouted out, if you do it often in your group, you hang out and you play these games together more and more and more, you, because you are practicing the craft, you're practicing this group thing that you're doing, you get better and better and better at it. And one day you'll be, you'll, you'll be Daniel and Dominos. <laughs> or you'll get the joy of saying, king me. See, I can't, Chinese checkers is a little hard. It, you know what Chinese sectors remind me of? Those little triangles in the restaurant where you gotta jump those little things to get one little pet. Karyachi. Yahtzee. See, now we're back to the dots. <laughs> I do, I like Yahtzee. And you get better and better and better as you play. And I'm gonna tell you what, and don't be like Brent sometimes and be arrogant about how good you are. <laughs> Enjoy playing with your friends. Enjoying all those things that I talked about, you know, it's fun to win, but to win, there's always a loser. They're going to need encouragement. Are you understanding what I'm saying in this group? See, there's the simplest of things. There's where you become this strong group because of it. So you practice and you get better and better at what you do. One of the last things, or last two things, with a group, a that small group. With a small group in the hardest of times, because you've already knitted yourself together with the difficulties of one another, helping one another, when it becomes so hard, you'll be able to make it. 
One of the reasons is because the Savior always said, I will be with you. I'm among you. Right in the hardest of times. So your group's going through something that's rough, I'm right there with you. And guess what? There's no one that's going to come and push, push you over the cliff. Because the Savior, he walks right through groups. And I'm telling you that he'll be right there to provide you with everything. Even of the most important thing, when there's sin involved, he will remind each and every one of us, I have the great escape for that. So as a group, you can come together. That's that talking where I was talking about lifting someone up. The last thing is in a group is it is about the friendships that you gain. Sometimes, ready? In a, in a, especially in a church group, when you're that close-knit, when someone leaves, your heart hurts a little bit, but the friendship thought process really never leaves your brain. You hurt just a little, but you'll, you know what? And maybe some of this has to do with the way I was brought up because when you go to high school and uh, your friends come and go, in a matter of years. It's not like you go, hey, I, because my grandkids are in this kind of realm like thing. Man, I went to school and, and I had a friend from kindergarten all the way up to college because that's where we live. Well, sometimes friends come and go, but you will have them for a lifetime. Maybe just in little words, not like what it used to be, but you'll still have them. A church friendship lasts a lifetime. Ready? You know what a church friendship does? It lasts an eternity. Now, some of you are going to freak out. I don't know about that friend forever. <laughs> I kid. Because in heaven, that friendship will be pure. As we all join together, worshiping, praising, seeing what God has for us in the heavenly realm. Ashley, come on up. I want to emphasize, of all these storytelling and scriptures of, of, of the importance of God within this, the group, as we, as a church, move forward, there are going to be people that are going to come in here, they're ready, man, I don't even, we're a small church, right? So here's, it's a guarantee, if 80 people come in here, we're going to sit back and go, man, this church has changed. Well, of course it has. Because a small group of believers felt that God was going to do something in this church and create other groups other than just this little thing here. And we get to be a part of it. So it's not, hey, the church has changed. It's, hey, look what God is doing with church all over. And there's going to be a church up the street doing the same thing we're doing. A church over there doing the same thing we're doing. Why is that? Because we're all in this together for the kingdom. To be with God. And so, when this takes place, I want, us, I want you guys to go and remember this day that, you know what? Pastor said there's going to be extra groups in here. He had them listed. There's people that are going to be playing instruments we never heard. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be actually going to be a game group, <laughs> you know, that's going to take place. All this is going to take place, and God's going to draw this church closer together as a church with just different little factions in it, and that's okay. All this takes place because of our Savior. I'm going to sing a song called Nothing But the Blood. I'm going to, kind of, you want to do it after the song or before the song? After. After the song, okay. And so I want us to go ahead and uh, get your guitars. I want you to realize each and every one of you are important part of the church, part of this little group here, part of Bible study. Bible study of that group is nationwide with a good 12. But we know this, it can only be done through God. Not through any, it, not through posters, not through sermons. It's only by what God does to us. That changes who we are, draws us closer, whatever to do his, his what is for him. God, in these moments, as we get ready to sing this song, we do exactly ask that. Help our hearts to see what you have laid out for the church. For us personally, in our walk with you, in the groups that we are going to be a part of, 
and as part of the church within our community, help us to see what you see in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.